Hi, everyone, and welcome to No Touch Team Building Connection Craze. My name is Mark Friedrich, and I'm honored to be your presenter today. I'm coming to you virtually from Melbourne High School up here in the great state of New Jersey. Let's take a look at my classroom space. I'm an adventure education teacher at Melbourne High School. My classroom space, outdoors and indoors, involves a lot of high elements. I think I'm pretty fortunate. What about you? Where's Melbourne High School, you ask? Oh, man, it's simple. If you can find New York City, I'm just 22 miles west of New York City. Let's take a look at our program agenda for Connection Craze today. I'm going to share with you my five group values for adventure education classes at Melbourne High School. I'm going to tell you about the so what or the why. Why do we do connection at all, Mark? We're going to look at virtual versus live settings for connection activities. I will share with you some resources, some strategies for teaching connection activities. We're definitely going to connect. You'll see some interactive play pre-recorded. We're going to talk about safety and COVID-19 protocols during this time period. I will leave you with a now what, how you can move forward with connection on your own. And obviously, I'll tell you how you can stay connected with me, your presenter. Are you ready? Let's talk about group values in adventure education and team building settings. I prefer high five adventures, high five hand as the model for my group values. In the high five hand, each finger represents one of our class values. Let's take a look at them. Your thumb, it represents being on board. Be on board with trying something new. Be on board with being a good sport. Be on board with giving me your best. Be on board with being adventurous. Your index finger, don't point that finger at anyone else. Point that finger at yourself and take responsibility for your own actions. Ask yourself, what did you do to contribute to the team? The middle finger, a sign of disrespect. Please don't disrespect anyone. In fact, let's remember, respect not only your classmates, your teacher, the equipment, but respect the challenges you're going to go through in adventure education and team building. The ring finger, a sign of commitment. Be committed to giving your best. Be committed to trying something new. Be committed to connecting with new classmates. And lastly, the pinky, symbolic of safety. We're talking physical and emotional safety in team building and adventure education. Keep an eye out for your participants, keep an eye out for your classmates, and make sure everyone feels safe physically and emotionally. We don't want anyone getting hurt in adventure education class. Well, there you have it. The group values according to High Five Adventure and our High Five Hand. I personally use this in my classes, and I suggest you adopt it into your classes as well. Okay, it's connection time. Let's find out about your presenter. In order for you to find out about me, I thought we'd start with an activity that I do with my students. It's a connection activity called three Ps. Three Ps is something personal, something playful, something professional about yourself. So let's find out about me using the three Ps model. My proudest personal accomplishment has to be my family. My wife, three children, and my dog, Jedi, are everything to me. I'm totally a family guy. I'm a beach person also. Visiting the Outer Banks in North Carolina is one of my favorite vacation spots. When I'm at the beach, I'm happiest. My playful would be running. I love to run as a way to relieve stress. Going out for runs on Sunday morning is one of my favorite things to do on the weekend. I'm also a Tough Mudder. Did you know I've completed 18 Tough Mudder events? Really proud of that. Professionally, well, I have a couple. I was named New Jersey Aford, now Shape NJ, High School Teacher of the Year in 2016 for my adventure education program. In 2021, I won the Joy of Effort Award by Shape America. Both these are great professional accomplishments and I'm really proud of them. So those are my three Ps, my personal, my playful, my professional. Now let's find out about you. So these are the three Ps we're gonna to use tonight. I want my participants to use something personal, something playful, and something professional. Are you ready to play? Let's do it. All right, I'm gonna ask Will to share something personal, playful, or professional about himself. And then Will, I would like for you to pass it to one of your classmates. Go ahead. Um, so playful, my playful is I'm a huge movie fan. And I spend a lot of time enjoying movies and thinking and talking about movies. Um, I really enjoy talking about movies with friends and uh, other people that I meet. 
Um, it was one of the great joys of my life was working at a blockbuster video for very many years. And now I'm going to pass it to Mike. What do you have, Mike? Um, my professional is that I teach elementary PE in Fullerton, California, just north of Anaheim. Great. I'm going to pass it to Stephanie. Um, my playful would be uh, joining a running club close by to my uh, city and getting going with them every uh, Saturday morning and on their midweek runs on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Great. And I'm going to pass it on to Kayla. Sweet. Uh, my personal is that I started making handmade soaps last year and have been doing that for about a year now. That's pretty cool. Nicely done. All right. So I quickly learned a lot about my participants, about my classmates, about my students. So this is a great activity, like I said, for any age level. Now, I quickly want to get back into the presentation. Let's go to our next slide. So if you look at this slide, all right, three Ps, if you teach elementary school or middle school or high school, you can come up with a lot of different things. One last thing. Despite being virtual, I really would like to show you what it looks like for these activities to be done in a live setting. Let's take a quick look at participants from New York as they participated in 3Ps in a live setting this past fall. No matter what 3Ps you're talking about, this is a great activity to start the connection and begin a class period with. One last adaptation to this activity. Instead of verbalizing your 3Ps, students could use the rules for charades and act out their 3Ps. That's another great way to get your students to connect right away. Let's take a minute to talk about our so what. So why do we even do connection? Why is connection before content even important? I'll tell you why it's important as I give you the value of connection. Now, I learned these from Mark Collard, the owner of Playmail.com and a world-renowned experiential educator. When you learn from a legend all the way down in Australia, you know this is good stuff. I had the opportunity to relay the message during a podcast I did with the Pizza and PE crew in North Carolina this past October. Take a listen and watch as I explain our so what. I mean, connection, connection before content, the beautiful thing about that is there could be a science teacher out there listening to this, an English teacher, and they could, they could definitely relate to this. Um, you, you hit on it right away. It, number one, it builds relationships, all right? So you're building relationships amongst your classmates. You're building relationships between your classmate and your teacher. How often does the, do students not know anything about their teacher? Because right. teachers, don't, teachers don't want to give away any personal information. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking you to give away social security number, but you know, it's nice if they know your pet's name, if they know you're a, a fan of a certain sports team, if you like a certain food. There's nothing wrong with that. It's gonna make all your content richer. So when you do get into, like when I teach health, you know, you have to connect early so when you get into those serious topics like suicide depression mm -hmm. you know mental health issues they feel comfortable mm -hmm. um comfortable opening up to you if they can open up uh to you you get it way more out of them and it's gonna be more meaningful for them building trust is always huge um you want them to be able to come to you for other life experiences and and come to you and tell you if they have a problem but they don't trust you because you don't connect with them you're just maybe mm -hmm. you're that last person they they couldn't trust and you know they're feeling they're feeling that void and they're feeling empty in their moment of need kim i mean the sel benefits and mm -hmm. we can go on forever as far as building connection what that does you know especially last year participation barriers mm -hmm. i wanted i wanted my students opening up and opening up their microphones and talking and and when i said everyone open up your mics we use google google meet so when you open up your mic the light was green i used to say light them up green and they just knew everyone had to open up their mic. And you might have teachers saying, what are you crazy having, having all the mics open? But we set up standards and parameters. Like when mics are open, you have to monitor your noise. But then we would pass it around with like a whip around or a mm -hmm. uh, connect question. So, you know, participation barriers were gone. And lastly, wow. I, think, I think it's important, emotional safety. I always talked about physical safety in the venture education. You know, but in the last year, unless you fell out of your chair when you were at home and hit your head on the desk, you weren't really going to get hurt, but you could be easily uh, emotionally hurt. You made a comment, someone in the chat put something bad, someone mocked you, you know, and we always talk about, you know, physical safety and emotional safety are vital. So, I mean, right, right there, connection before content.
it just proves, you know, it's worth. Well, there you have it, the value of connection. I'd like to thank the Pizza and PE podcast crew for having me on for such a valuable conversation. Now that we've established group values and our so what, and we've connected a little bit, what do you say we dive into the activities vault at Melbourne High School? Whip arounds. Whip arounds are so much fun. Last year during virtual, I introduced whip arounds for my students when they were at home. It was a way to connect quickly and have students open up their microphones. We did whip arounds where we just said, good morning. We did whip arounds in foreign languages, such as our world whip. We did whip arounds where we said, are you feeling it? We got a little funky and we said, yo, what's up? We did a yo, what's up whip around. When I went to Wisconsin last year, virtually, we came up with our own, the Wisconsin Dairy Farmer. They got pretty crazy. Bottom line, a whip around is meant for instant connection when your students come into the classroom. As soon as students walk into your gymnasium, get them involved with saying good morning or saying hello to themselves, all right, without you dictating who says what. Let them control the conversation. Are you ready to play? Let's do it. Everyone is gonna turn on their microphone, all right? And you might say, Mark, that's pretty crazy. It works, turn on your microphone. But I also want you to envision the nine of us sitting in a class, okay? Yeah. As you walk into the gymnasium, I'm gonna have you stand up, all right? I might have something to throw, like a rubber chicken. I might have a Nerf football. And I would simply toss the Nerf football or the uh, throwable to Jessica. And I'll say, good morning, Jess, how are you? Jess would reply back to me by saying what? I'm doing fantastic. Okay. And then, and then do, Jess would pass to someone else. Um, Mike, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Stephanie, how are you? I'm awesome, thank you. Jen, how are you? I'm doing fabulous. Sid, how are you? I'm feeling pretty well tonight, thank you. Uh, how are you, Kayla? I'm great. Thank you. Kate, how are you? Uh, I'm super duper. Uh, Will, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Mark, how are you doing? I'm doing great. So if Will was the last student, Will would have the task, the daunting task of passing it back to the teacher. And sometimes that can be scary for kids, right? Or they're figuring out they're the last one. Let's try a fun one real quick. We determined last year that we had kind of a catchphrase say, saying, are you feeling it? And are you feeling it was kind of like, hey, you're all stuck at home. Are you feeling it today? All right. So it's time instead of saying good morning or good afternoon, we're just going to pass it around real quick and say, are you feeling it? Your interpretation for are you feeling it is pretty much what you're feeling. Are you feeling it or are you not feeling it? So let's start off. Shannon, good morning. Are you feeling it? I'm feeling it today, Mark. I'm excited. Right. I'm going to reach out to Abigail. Are you feeling it? I'm feeling it. Thank you. <laughs> Michelle, are you feeling it? I am feeling it. I love my PE family. Hey, Melanie, are you feeling it? Good morning. Yes, I'm feeling it. Um, Molly, are you feeling it? Um, I'm feeling it. I'm excited for today as well. Kristen, are you feeling it? I'm feeling it. Thanks for the shout out. Uh, Kara, are you feeling it? I'm feeling it. I need another cup of tea, I think, but I'll be good then. Um, Katie, are you feeling it? I'm feeling it. I'm pumped up for today. This is so nice to see everybody. Great job, Wisconsin. You definitely were feeling it that morning, and I can tell by the voices. You were all in. Speaking of all in, check out my friends from Connecticut demonstrate three different live whip arounds. Matthew, are you feeling it? I'm feeling it. Rock, are you feeling it? I'm feeling it. <laughs> Matt, are you feeling it? I'm feeling it, all right. Uh, what do we got here? Denise, you feeling it? I'm feeling it. Uh, Matt, are you feeling it? I'm feeling it. Uh, Brandon, you feeling it? I'm feeling it. Brian, you feeling it? Rocco, what's up? Uh, what's up? What's up, Matt? <laughs> uh, not much. <laughs> uh, KJ, what's up? What's up? Not much. Uh, Tor, what's up? Not much. What's up? Yo, Brandon, what's up? I'm chilling, thank you. Christina, what's up? What's up, what's up? Uh, Brian, what's up? Not that much. Ciao. Uh, Brian, buenos dias. Buenos dias. Hola. Hola. Como estas? 
Great job, Connecticut. Well, as you can see, whip rounds are an awesome way to start your class and build connection almost immediately. One more thing, you can use whip rounds as a way to take attendance immediately in your class. Instead of having students sit down in squads or boring attendance rows, have them spread out and do a whip round. As they whip it around, you're checking those names off. Be creative, have a little fun with it, let the students connect. All right, I'm going to take you now to one of my favorite new activities. As an adventure educator, I'm always looking for new ideas. These come from Playmeo.com down in Australia, and these are emoji cards, a great social emotional learning activity. It definitely builds connections. How often do teachers ask each student in the morning, how are you feeling? What is your mood? Emoji cards work awesome, whether you're in person or even in a remote situation. Let me tell you how they work. So last year during remote learning, I created this chart. I got pretty technical with my little bitmoji here. I even gave it a Melbourne High School Adventure Education hoodie, which I'm really proud of, always representing. So when students came on to a meet, they simply had to identify what number they were. Notice they didn't have to tell me if they were sad, happy, angry. They just had to give me a number. Students were much more apt to give a number than to actually open up and say they were feeling sad. But we knew if they gave me number seven, they were feeling pretty tired that day. Let's take a look at how I connected with people all over the world through our PLN play on social media. Each week in the fall, I put up a question based off one of the activities we were doing in my adventure education classes at Melbourne High School. I posed a question on Twitter, and before you knew it, people were playing along. That's connection. Let's take a look at some of the answers. I tweeted, it's Moji Monday, so play along PLN using 15 emoji cards from playmail.com express the following emotions. Number one, how was your weekend emotionally? Number two, how are you feeling emotionally today? Pick your numbers, say why, tag three friends, pass it on. It's quite simple. Let's take a look at some of the answers as our PLN connected over one simple thing, emoji cards. It's Moji Monday, how are you feeling? Up top center of this slide, Dr. Kim Ballard from North Carolina, she let us know she was a number eight. She was at home and feeling sick and she wanted some Twitter love. Check out the reply from Andrew Romberger, another North Carolina guy. He writes, I'm a day late, but I would say I was a five. Great weekend watching my daughter win her last soccer tournament. My birds won again at Eagles and I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving with family and friends. That's an awesome answer. Check out this one, I love it, from Joe Bailey in Wisconsin. Joe writes, a number two and a three and a five for me. I got to spend a day exploring London with my dad who I hadn't seen in two and a half years. Fairly sure number nine is gonna hit me very soon, AKA jet lag. That's awesome stuff. Thanks for sharing, Joe, all the way from England. Kim Morton checked in by saying she was a five this weekend because she laughed a lot. She was a number two on Moji Monday because sometimes you just got to chill out and be patient. Great advice, Kim. Thanks so much for checking in. Wow, those were some great answers from our PLN. And honestly, that's how the answers sound when you're in person too. Let's do this. Let's play. But in order for us to play, obviously with a virtual recording, you're going to have to watch others play. Let's take a look at emoji cards in action. Here, participants select the card off the floor based off how they were feeling that day for the PD workshop we were doing. Participants were asked to pick a card based off their emotions during the school year of 2020-2021. You can only imagine some of the emotions that were brought up. Do you see what I see? Do you hear what I hear? Participants are actually opening up about their personal emotions to their classmates and colleagues. That's pretty amazing. That's connection. That's one of the things I truly love about emoji cards from Playmeo.com. This larger group of participants were asked to pick an emotion based off how they were feeling on day one of their state association convention. It was a rather big convention, and we had a lot of participants. They did an awesome job. So as you can see from this short video, 
Emoji cards from Playmail.com serve as a great social emotional learning activity and an awesome connection game. I recommend these to anyone involved with team building. Mark, where can I get these? Great question. These cards can be purchased from Playmail.com or you can get them on Amazon. Let's talk about resources. I did promise you I would share my resources. It's like giving up my secrets. Number one, Playmail.com for team building and connection activities is awesome. If you're not on Playmail.com, you should check it, definitely check it out. Over Unlock 480 plus fun and engaging interactive group games with almost like lesson plan formats, descriptions, videos. Playmail.com is amazing and totally worth it if you're into connecting activities. Um, lastly, about the emoji cards. Mark Collard, who is the, um, the creator of Playmail, has an amazing YouTube channel. If you want free material and free resources, check it out. It's just simply Mark Collard. And you can see he's got over 53,000 followers. These videos really did a great job of keeping me connected last year during the pandemic. I highly recommend visiting it. Well, that's a wrap for emoji cards, a definite product of the pandemic. If it wasn't for the pandemic, I don't know if I would have found this product. Looking for activities to do virtually, I discovered emoji cards. I'm so glad I did, and I think you'll enjoy them too. Whoa, we connect cards. I love these. These absolutely, this little box absolutely saved me through the pandemic last year because my students love to talk and they were, they were craving connection online. And as you can see from the box right there in front of you, we connect cards. They create conversations that matter. 60 questions, 10 plus activities, infinite connections. So if you were following me this fall on social media, I started doing something called We Connect Wednesdays. And I started it last year and it worked out really well. So here's what a We Connect Wednesday would look like in my class. I would lay the cards out in front of me all right, on, if I was at the ropes course on you know, a wood platform in the grass, I, got, I was trying to get creative with the photography towards the end. But you can see here that the pink cards are questions of self-reflection. The green cards are cards that are fun and light and the blue cards are always a bit deeper. So because I practice challenge by choice in my class, I don't just give one question. I give the students a choice. So if you don't wanna go deeper, you'll probably choose the pink question. So let's just take a quick look at some of the questions on your screen as I produced We Connect Wednesday this past fall. So notice I have these actually sitting on a ladder. And it, when you get creative like this, you know, every time the wind blows, your cards go off. But look at the pink question. What is difficult for you now, but was really easy as a child? All right. You should hear what some of the students come up with. What is one of your favorite things about someone in your family? Having a high school student come in or any student come into your class and then talk kindly about their mother, their father, their sister, their brother, it's pretty awesome, all right? This one is laid down right in the mulch. What book on your shelf is begging to be read? It's kind of cool to hear students in a physical education class talking about literature every now and then. What is a talent or skill you've always wanted to learn? Speaking of learning, let's see what we can learn from our PLN in this segment of PLN Play. So in the fall, when it was Wednesday, it definitely was We Connect Wednesday. I set the tweet up by putting We Connect Wednesday zipline theme. Here we go, PLN. Reply below with the color emoji system for your answer this week. Tag friends and get the conversation rolling. Once the topic was set, the connections began. My friend Elise checked in by saying her most adventurous thing she had ever done was signing up to study in Australia when she had never been on an airplane before. That's pretty adventurous. Thanks for checking in, Elise. Our friend Joey Fight from Canada checked in for We Connect Wednesday by saying he got to realize a lifelong dream and coach his kid at soccer for the first time, even though his son decided to wear a dinosaur costume to soccer practice. That's funny and pretty awesome. Thanks for checking in, Joey. Anna Forcelito from Missouri checked in. She talked about her three sisters. She says, they all have something different about them, but the one thing they all have in common, they all have four big hearts. You gotta love that answer. Thanks so much, Anna. I'm all about adventure. So when Katrina from Illinois checked in to let us know during We Connect Wednesday that the most adventurous thing she'd ever done was skydiving in Australia, 
That brought a smile to my face. Thanks so much, Katrina, for participating. Thanks so much for playing, PLN. But now let's take a look at what do We Connect cards look like in a virtual setting. Take a look. Um, my high school daughter had her cross-country banquet tonight, and she walked away with most valuable player, rookie of the year, and first team all county. That made me smile. How about you, Will Potter? What's made you smile in the last two weeks? Uh, being able to get online and get Spider-Man tickets uh, for opening night. Uh, it took me three hours, but at the end of it, I was super excited and super happy. Uh, I'm going to pass it to Mike. I was playing with my kids on the trampoline today, and they like to make a cake where I'm smushed on the bottom, and then my older daughter and my younger son, and my son kept putting a ball in between and would fall off, and my daughter was cracking up. So hearing them enjoy playing together really made me smile. Uh, Kate, what's something that made you smile in the last two weeks? Um, I would say just getting our Christmas tree when we chopped it down out on the um, on the mountain. It looked, you know, not that big, and then we got it home, and it suddenly like grew on the on the car ride home, and uh, it just made me smile once we we trimmed it a bit and got it up. It's um, it's got a lot of character, but it just makes me smile uh, when I look because it makes me happy thinking about Christmas. Wow. So, so these answers that you guys gave, all right, if you think about your students, you opened up and talked about some personal stuff. You talked about your children, your families. It really does happen with the students too. So we connect cards, totally worth buying. And again, you can get them on Amazon or you can visit Chad's website. Um, and it's, it's on the bottom of the screen there. It's we and me. So uh, definitely visit it. Chad is a trainer. He's a uh, experiential trainer. He's a motivational speaker. He's done TED Talks. He too has an awesome connection, you know, YouTube channel where he's not only doing stuff for schools and, and educational settings, he's doing stuff for like group building with like corporate, like Google and IBM and things like that. His videos are always engaging. Uh, he does a really nice job putting together videos. So I would recommend definitely visiting or subscribing to Chad Littlefield's YouTube channel. Where he has his store, there are so many other great products for team building and connection as well. I would definitely check it out. Are you ready to play? Let's do it. Let's take a look at two different groups using We Connect cards in a live setting. So these are We Connect cards being used by two live groups at Professional Developments with me this fall. Both groups are utilizing the back of the card which has participants do exercises while they're connecting. The exercise activity on the back of the We Connect card serves as a great distraction. As the connection is happening and the topics are being discussed, people don't even realize that they're actually doing some exercising. The last thing I'll say about these two groups is they got to choose which card they wanted to pick. I had them scattered on the floor and it was challenged by choice. If you don't want people touching your cards, you could have a no touch zone. Creation of a no touch zone prevents people from handling your cards, which might be something you want during a pandemic. There's nothing wrong with the teacher selecting three questions like I did earlier with the PLN. Meaningful connection and exercise all in one activity, you gotta love it. The last thing I will say is the questions in the box usually are geared towards middle school and high school students. However, you could modify them for elementary school. We Connect cards are another one of those products of the pandemic. I purchased it during virtual learning and I'm so glad I did. These definitely have become one of my favorite props for adventure education. I highly suggest you add them to your bag of tricks. Kamchi Connection. Uh, so Kamchi Connection is something new, all right, something new I started, and I'm really excited about this product because Kamchi cards, all right, which you can see here, are very colorful, and they also have essential questions. They do a great job of taking one pack of cards and combining various activities. So you can see paint chips now have questions on them. They're not just Home Depot paint chips. All right, so just like the We Connect cards, the ComChi questions have, uh, cards have questions on them that engage students in good conversation. Where do these come from, Mark? Well, that's a great question. 
our good friend Beau Chappelle, who's from uh, Pennsylvania Shape or Shape PA, and is also a Shape America uh, Teacher of the Year. Um, Bo and his wife Daniela Land created Com Sheet Cards. Right? They have a company called We Integrated, and if you look at the corner there, it says uh, the Latin root for Com. All right, is together. All right, Chi, divine life coming together to share the spirit of each other. I mean, that is awesome. That is just what connection's all about. So I totally thank Bo and his wife, Daniela, for creating this product. On uh, one side, you can see are the questions in the paint chip. On the other side are these beautiful images, and there's also games you can do with uh, playing cards. So there's so many things you can do, and it literally, it comes in one small pack of cards all right, so instead of having several packs, you could have one and get a lot of connection across. Let's take a look at some of the sample questions from the Comchi deck. What song best describes or speaks to you? If you were an animal, what would you be and why? What made you laugh today or this week? What do you do to relax? This deck is packed with essential questions that really start the conversations. I love the questions and I love the outcomes from using ComChi cards. Speaking of outcomes, let's see what happens when we did a little ComChi connection with our PLN. Let's take a look at some PLN play answers. PLN play, all right? Well, we did ComChi connection for Thanksgiving and the response was outstanding. All right. The question was on the green card. What are some little things you can be thankful for? Let's check out my friend Daniel from Tennessee. He said he's beyond thankful for the health and well-being of his family and friends. And he actually shared some photos. That was pretty awesome. My good friend Brian from Georgia. All right. Simple. Good coffee and fantastic phys ed friends coast to coast make me thankful every day. Um, I love this too. Dina from New Jersey, thankful for the most amazing group of students known as my student council. We are making a difference. All right. So I love these answers. And these are the same kind of answers you get from students. Speaking of students, Matthew Bassett checked in from California with nothing but praise for his amazing student teacher. You're too kind, Matt. Thanks for playing along. Those are awesome answers. And they just, you know, from one card got people thinking about the small things in life that make a big difference. Imagine your students using ComChi cards for this. I truly appreciate our PLN playing along for ComChi Connection, but now it's time to show you what ComChi cards look like when you use them in a virtual setting. So let's play. I chose a special card today for Will Potter. I know, Will, you're a big movie fan. So here's your ComChi Connect card. Which fictional character would be the most fun to meet in real life and why, right? Which fictional character would be the most fun to meet in real life and why? I'm gonna start it off with my friend, Will, all right? Everyone else should be thinking, but Will, you're on the hot seat right now. While you're thinking, I'm gonna tell you, it has nothing to do with the black card, it just so happens. I would love, love to hang out with Darth Vader. I would just, I think it would be so cool. I'm a big Star Wars fan. So I think hanging around with Darth Vader and seeing him and being with him and trying to figure out, you know, everything there is about the dark side and all that would intrigue me. I also would love to sit down with Yoda, all right? Because the wise old Jedi master definitely probably has some good insight that I could use. So anyone from Star Wars, but definitely Yoda or Darth Vader. All right, Will, you've had a couple of seconds to think which fictional character would you be your uh, Comchi connection today? Uh, I'm I'm probably gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Iron Man. Uh, he seems like a good time. Uh, he's got really cool gadgets. He's very rich. Um, he's not Superman, uh, which means he actually would be easy to talk to, and I wouldn't feel you know a little starstruck by him. Uh, and I think uh, we would just have a really good time together. Uh, I'm going to go with Steph. Um, my fictional character would probably be Harry Potter because I would want to know everything and anything about Hogwarts. And I want to, I want to like 
I want him to sneak me into Hogsmeade and show me like his like invisible coat and like it's just I I'd be stoked. I just <laughs> want to learn everything about it. <laughs> awesome. Do a couple more. Pick someone, Steph. Um, who would be most fun to meet in real life? Um, Sid. What about you? Wow, this is a this is one that just kind of zaps me. But I I'm thinking, you know, why not the cat in the hat? Uh, it'd be fun to just bounce around with him. You know, try to try to like get help him out of predicaments. Um, I think that'd be a real blast. Um, what do you think, Kayla? Which uh, fictional character would you be most fun would be most fun for you to meet in real life? I am torn between um, the minions from Despicable Me because that would just be a hilarious time going around and doing pranks and getting away with it. And also meeting Wonder Woman in real life because I'm pretty sure I'd be super starstruck and have a blast as well. Okay, well, I can't agree with you more. I think it would be awesome. I also would want to see that invisible jet. Not that I could see it, but I want to know how it works. You know, I, well, I would want to ride in it. And yes, yes. Great. Me too. All right. Great job. Um, I love having these cards out uh, because something like this, you get to see another side to your students. It's not always about physical education, all right, and sports and athletics. All right. You get to learn what are some of their likes. And Steph's answer about Harry Potter, I think that's probably one of the number one answers is meeting Harry Potter. So Steph, you're not alone there. Be sure to check out resources for ComChi cards. Bo and his wife, Daniela, have a website, weintegrated.org. You may purchase ComChi cards off weintegrated.org, or they are available through Amazon.com. I'm super excited to announce I'll be teaming up with Bo Chappelle this April at Shape America's National Convention and Exposition in New Orleans. Come check out ComChi with me as Bo and I run through so many great ideas and activities that you can do with ComChi cards. We can't wait to see you in New Orleans. All right, my good friend, Amy Clymer out of North Carolina, she created an awesome deck of cards. Now her deck of cards, and I call this activity, here's the story. And we're gonna do this, so please pay attention. Her deck of cards is all about watercolors. All right, someone painted these beautiful watercolors on these, and on these cards and the cards are literally, you know, the size of a regular card, all right? So I laid these out, if this was a gym floor, I would lay them on the gym floor. And then for here's the story, we have to come up with one continuous story using all of the cards. So now this activity that we're gonna to do to connect with our classmates, all right? It may not sound perfect, but it's gonna get everyone to talk about this card, I think it's this card, we'll get to it in a second, about one of this card or something like this, this card, where you have to talk about the octopus, the fish, the car, the lightning bolt, the eyeball, and come up with a, a story. I'm gonna throw up this card, and it is the octopus card, all right? And I'm gonna start us off real simple, all right? You guys are the ones in trouble, not me. So I'll start us off. Once upon a time, there was a purple octopus. Tag will, you're it. Once upon a time, there was a purple octopus. You may pick any other card, Will, but you got to continue the story about the octopus. The purple octopus was a great artist and loved to paint. And I'm going to pass that to Stephanie. The purple octopus who loved to paint also really loved goldfish. He loved to eat goldfish. I'm passing it on to Kate. And the purple octopus who liked to paint and have goldfish also had a big brown eye on the lookout for any other sea creatures he could find. You want me to pass it on or are you good? Sure, pass it on. Okay, I'm going to pass it on to, uh, to Jess. Since he was on a lookout to find other sea creatures, he decided he had to explore the whole world. Pass it on to Mike. As the purple octopus explored the whole world, uh, she was inspired by all the different creatures she met and created the heart painting to show her love for all the creatures she met. I'll pass it on to Sid. So the purple octopus was 
feeling pretty exhausted and climbed into the tent. And I'll pass it on to Jennifer. Have you done anything yet on this one? <laughs> yeah, as a purple octopus was sleeping in a tent, a huge storm <sighs> came their way. Okay, and you can see easily how if you had a group of students with cards spread out on the floor could quickly come together, connect, and come up with an amazing story like the story of our purple octopus. So here's the story, all right, from Climber Cards, Dr. Amy Climber, all right, her website is here. There's also a virtual set of Climber Cards where you can get by visiting climberconsulting.com. To attain this resource and get your own set of Climber Cards, Go to Amazon.com or visit ClimberCards.com. How long do I let my connection activities go for? Here's something cool I learned along the way that I think we all can relate to. Connection conversations in any one of these activities is like a bag of microwave popcorn. What? Think about a bag of microwave popcorn. When you put it in, it always starts slowly and then it bursts. And then it starts to get less and less and less. And if you're greedy, and you let it go to the last pop, you probably ruined it. Same thing with connection activities. Let it burst, let it go crazy. And then when you think conversation is starting to wind down, pull it out, all right? And say, that's it. I normally, in a health class currently, if I do something like Rose Thorn and Bud, I'll let it go about four to five minutes. Not 45, four to five minutes. Okay, so you don't want to overdo it because if the conversation dies, it loses, it loses its effectiveness. All this talk about popcorns making me hungry, but seriously, get your popcorn ready, get ready to connect, and just remember, don't let it go too long. Stop the connection activities just at the right time. If you overdo it, it's going to burn. All right, last activity. You got your pens and paper ready? The messy artist. I did ask you to bring with you a piece of paper and a Sharpie, okay? The messy artist works like this. And originally this activity comes from Playmium. I would like for you to secretly pick someone on our screen. You have been commissioned to draw a portrait of them, what you see. However, you are not allowed to tell them you are drawing them you are not allowed to ask them to do anything. However they are looking right now is how you're gonna draw them. Every detail from the glasses to the hairstyle to the shirt to something as simple as even a backdrop behind you. Here's the catch. We teach honesty and trust. I am trusting that you will not look down at your paper. When I say go, you're gonna have your paper and you're gonna have your pen, okay? And don't draw too big because you actually will draw on your table. Before you go, I would like you to write the person's name down. Just write it down, but do not share with anyone. Then when I say go, your eyes are fixated on the camera. You are staring at the person, but as you're staring at them, you are drawing their picture. I'm going to give you about two minutes. Watch them in your drawing, but do not look down. California artist, are you ready? Okay, here we go. Begin. Not bad, Mark, not bad. Now, do not change it. Take that pen, right, and get it out of your hands. I think I'm in the wrong profession. I think I should be an artist, all right? Kate, that is you. That's way yeah. better yeah. than mine, let me see. That's the hair, I have your extra long arm with no hands sticking out. Kate, I'm gonna, I'll send this to you, okay? Thank you. Let's screenshot it. Please autograph it. And I will send it to you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So hold them up. Everyone hold them up. What do we have? Oh, Will. What the heck, Will? Who is that, Will? That's that's Mike. That's oh, yeah. those are his oh. glasses. That was that was his be the, the the mustache. This was the, the rest of his beard. And I didn't get to the hair, but that's his ear. And then that's his jacket and his shoulders. 
Wow, love it. All right, Sid, wow. who do you draw? This is you, Mark. All right, that's what I thought. I could tell by the shape <laughs> of the head there. Nicely done. You nailed it. That's actually pretty good. All right. Um, Thank you. I, I'm going to guess what, well, Steph? All right. I know that picture. All yeah. Right, you like how Kate's ear is in her eyeglasses? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Awesome job. All right. And let's go to Jessica. Jessica, who is that? How can you not tell that's Will? That's like a perfect replica right there. It looks like Shrek. <laughs> perfect replica. All right. Oh, yes. Okay. But see, that's the, from the shirt, like his tapered logo. Come on. Okay. Totally giveaway right there. I see. Kate, who did you draw? Um, you can't tell that that's Mike. No, <laughs> no, an image. No. Yeah, it was no. Mike, of course. He had the same uh, issue with the the beard and the must like trying to figure out where. After you drew the head, you were like, okay, I think the the beard is supposed to go yeah. here. Yeah, uh, I, 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 exactly my problem. Oh. Uh, All right, Mike, who did you draw? I drew Sid. Yeah, I got my so background details there, but my no, drawing is. is not as good as my first graders for sure. When I do this with students, I mean, it, the, the laughter and joy it brings to their faces, especially when they were home for remote. Now, one of the things I did with my high school students, because they're always they're always on the phone, right? I actually have them take a screenshot and then email or text the person the shot. So that's like I said, I'm gonna be sending that to Kate later today. All right, let me get back. Good, good job, California, you are artistic out there. I know what you're saying. Mark, that's a small class. I have large classes. This activity will never work for connection in my class. Take a look at what Wisconsin did last year when I showed up to their virtual convention. We Wisconsin had an awesome time drawing. and Wisconsin definitely rocked messy artists. You have one minute, one minute. And we're gonna wrap it up in five, four, three, two, one. And freeze, drop those pens, don't you cheat. All right, so now to get your drawing, you're gonna hold it up really close. Oh, I know who Penny drew. Penny, that's okay, Penny, that should be hanging on their wall right behind them, all right? Um, Matt and Steph, did you see that picture Penny drew? You should definitely get that blown up. All right, so let's do a couple. So you would hold them up and I would just go through and I would read, all right? I'm gonna go up to Jackie. Yours really caught my eye because I see that you've spent a lot of time on the hair. Jackie, can you tell us who that is? <laughs> that is my friend, Katie Malloy, who has the most curly hair in the whole uh, entire yeah. world. <laughs> I'll take your word on it, Katie. What do you give her as far as, isn't that, I mean, that's a perfect rendition of you. <laughs> I feel like it's pretty good. My, that's you know, good. face a little crooked, but the hair. You can definitely is, I even got the. I even got the earbuds. That is it's not bad. Cord. All right. right. It's uh, Michelle K on the bottom. All right. Who, oh, that's Jay. Look at Jay's up there shaking his head. He knew it was him. Jay, <laughs> Jay she did a nice job. All right. And um, I'm going to go over to Preston. Preston, you look like you drew Scott. Can you show Scott that picture? Great job, artist. And now you can see why this is called The Messy Artist. The Messy Artist is an awesome team building connection culminating event. Speaking of culminating, let's put a wrap on this PD. Once again, let's take one more look at our so what, the value of connection. Connection helps build relationships, makes your content richer, establishes trust, leads to SEL benefits, removes participation barriers, and improves emotional safety of the group. What about our now what? Look, it's simple. Your now what is connections are key. Building connections throughout the pandemic and beyond has been vital for me as an adventure educator. Starting with connections first always enriches your program. I encourage you to try connection activities, but remember, you need to participate. You need to buy in. If you buy in, the students will follow. Good luck with connection activities and feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. No presentation is complete without thanking the people who helped you get to where you are today. These are my rock stars. These people that are listed on your screen in front of you absolutely went above and beyond to help me out during the pandemic and with virtual learning. I can't thank them enough. They mean the world to me. My number one connection and biggest thank you always goes to Mark Collard, the owner of Playmeo.com all the way down in Melbourne, Australia. Mark's an experiential educator, a team builder, a world-renowned author, and an all around good guy. He took so much time to make sure I was on track with virtual learning and choosing the right activities for my students 
all the way up here in New Jersey. Thank you so much, Mark, for your time and patience with me. I also want to thank you, the participants in today's workshop. Thank you so much for having me present virtually, and I hope you enjoyed your time with me. A quick reminder to stay connected with me, your presenter. At the end of this presentation will be a slide with all my information. I'm on social media, and you can follow me there or shoot me an email. I'm always willing to help. Do you want to learn more about adventure education and connection activities? Check out the two podcasts I was part of this past fall. One is Joey Fights Phys Ed Radio Show. The other is Pizza and PE Podcast with the good folks from North Carolina. Both will give you way more information and expand your connections with me. And lastly, here's my contact information. Please feel free to write it down so we can stay connected. If you have any questions or concerns about this presentation or anything related to adventure education, team building, or connection activities, reach out to me right away. I'm always willing to help. Thank you so much. Have a great day.